hi good morning uh, in this video we prove the dual space of rn is rn rn is the set of all intuples and the dual space of rn is the set of all bounded linear functionals on rn see by saying that the dual space of a, a, a set capital a is capital b we mean that the dual space of a is isomorphic to b and we know that this dual space of capital a and b cannot be set theoretically equal because one is a collection of functions and the other is set of elements so when we say the dual space of a set capital a is capital b we only mean that the dual space of capital a is isomorphic to b so we here need to prove that the dual space b r and r the set of all bounded linear functionals on r and we know that the underlying field here is set of real numbers and so the set of all bounded linear operators the bounded linear functionals on r and is b r and r and we need to show that this b r and r of r and is isomorphic to r and so for that we need a 1 1 on to norm preserving linear operator from r and dash r and dash is this this is r and dash r and dash b r and r so in sequel we will uh, find an isomorphism between r and dash and r and now we start with the information that rn is finite dimensional and by a result we already know that any linear functional on rn is bounded and hence belongs to rn dash and the collection of all linear functionals on rn is the algebraic dual of rn denoted by rn star so this rn star is equal to the set of all bounded linear functionals on rn because any linear functional on a finite dimensional normed space is bounded so we have this rn star is equal to rn dash so there is no difference between the collection of all linear functionals and the collection of all bounded linear functionals on rn now let e1 e2 e3 etc en be a basis for rn where ei is an ordered n triplet with zeros and one only in the ith position and this is the standard basis for r okay and you consider an x is equal to x1 x2 etc xn belongs to r then this x can be written as a linear combination of the basis elements e1 e2 e3 etc en as x1 e1 plus x2 e2 plus etc plus xn en where these xis are scalars belongs to capital r and that is the underlying field and let f be any linear functional on r so f of x is equal to f of x is x1 e1 plus etc plus xn en so f of x is equal to f of x1 e1 plus etc plus xn en we apply the linearity of f so this can be written as x1 fe1 plus x2 fe2 plus etc plus xn fen then all these fi f of ei belongs to capital r and that is equal to sigma i from 1 to n xi fei so e each of this fei fe1 fe2 etc fen belongs to r so this is an n triple in r we call that n triple as v so we define v is equal to the ordered n triplet fe1 fe2 etc fen belongs to r and we already know that rn is equipped with the usual norm therefore norm of x x is equal to ordered n triplet x1 x2 etc xn so norm of x is equal to sigma i from 1 to n xi square the all raised to 1 by 2 and norm v the newly defined vector v 
the norm of that vector is equal to sigma i from 1 to n f e i square the all raised to half. Now, we have fx is equal to this. Therefore, modulus of fx is equal to modulus of sigma i from 1 to n xi f e i. And we can apply Cauchy sheds inequality here. So this modulus is less than or equal to sigma i from 1 to n xi square the all raised to half into sigma i from 1 to n f e i square the all raised to half. And the first term, this is norm x. And the second term, this is norm v. Therefore, modulus of fx by norm x is less than or equal to norm v. And we know that the norm of f is the supremum among these, quad, these numbers. For each x, we compute modulus of fx by norm x for x not equal to 0, in fact. Then the supremum of among these numbers, supremum among these, that is what is known as norm of f. Each of these numbers, modulus of fx by norm x is less than or equal to norm v. Therefore, the supremum is also less than or equal to norm v. Therefore, norm of f is less than or equal to norm v. We call it as 1. Now, we consider a particular vector, say, v. We consider a particular x, say, x is equal to v. See, what is this v? Remember that when a linear functional f is there, we have a v is equal to f e 1, f e 2, etc., f e n. So, this is the relation between the linear functional f and the so-called defined vector v. We consider a particular x. See, this is a particular element of Rn. We take this as x. Then norm of x is equal to norm v. And x is the ordered antiplet f e1, f e2, etc., f e n. That is also a linear combination of e1, e2, e3, etc., e n in this unique way, f e1, e1 plus f e2, e2 plus etc., plus f e n, e n. Therefore, f of v is equal to f of x. That is equal to f of this. f is a linear functional. We apply the linearity. So, scalar into f e 1 plus second scalar into f e 2, etc. So, this is f e 1, f e 1 plus, etc. plus f e n, f e n. That is equal to sigma i from 1 to n, f e i square. And we already know that this is the norm v square. This is the square of the uh, norm of vector v. Therefore, f v by norm v is equal to norm v. See, this is a particular x we have chosen. And we computed f v by uh, norm v. Uh, since f v is equal to norm v square, modulus of f v is also norm v square because this is positive. Therefore, modulus of f v by norm v is equal to norm v. And norm of f is the supremum among these numbers. And one among such a number is norm v. Therefore, norm of f cannot be less than norm v. Therefore, norm f less greater than or equal to norm v. Call it as 2. So, from 1 and 2, we get norm f is equal to norm v. So, what we have now proved, in short, is given a linear functional f on Rn, we get a corresponding vector v is equal to f e1, f e2, etc., f e n, such that norm of f is equal to norm of v. So, if we have Rn dash as a set of all linear functionals or set of all bounded linear functionals, see, there are no, there is no difference between these two uh, sets. If we, when we have the set of all linear functionals on Rn, Rn dash, Corresponding to every f in Rn, we get a corresponding v belongs to Rn, where v is given by f e1, f e2, etc., f e n. That is the image of the basis elements in that order under f, the ordered antiplet formed by the images of the basis elements in that order. Now we have this correspondence corresponding to every linear functional, corresponding to every member of Rn dash, we have a member of Rn with equal norms. Now we are in a position to establish an isomorphism T 
between Rn dash and Rn. We have this correspondence in our mind. So we define T as that correspondence. We define T from Rn dash to Rn by T of F is equal to V. Now we can show that this T is the required isomorphism. For that, T should be non preserving 1, 1, 1, 2, and linear. T should be non preserving 1, 1, 1, 2, and linear. And we shall prove this one by one. So first one that is quite easy, T is non preserving. This is because norm of TF is equal to norm of TF is V. T is so defined such that TF is equal to V. Therefore, norm of TF is equal to norm of V. And we have proved that norm of V is equal to norm of F. So norm of TF is equal to norm of F. Therefore, T is norm preserving. So this is okay. So T is norm preserving. Now T is 1, 1. So for that, let TF is equal to TG for two linear functionals F and G on R for two linear functionals f and g on R. Therefore, by definition of TF, the associated vector is the ordered antiplet formed by the images of the basis vector in that order under F. So that is F E1, F E2, etc. F E N. That is equal to T G, that is G E1, G E2, etc. G E N. And by the equality of these two entiples, we have f of e i is equal to g of e i for all i. Therefore, f and g agrees on a basis. Therefore, f and g are identically equal on a basis of R. If, if two linear E2 functions agrees on a basis, then they agree on the whole space. Therefore, f of f is equal to g on R and therefore t is 1, 1. So, we prove t is 1, 1. And now to show that T is own to. So in order to show that T is own to, we need to show that for any V belongs to Rn, there is a corresponding linear functional F belongs to Rn dash such that Tf is equal to V. So you take a V belongs to Rn. So let V is equal to, since it is a member of Rn, it is an ordered antiplet. So let V is equal to gamma 1, gamma 2, etc. Gamma n belongs to Rn. Then for any x belongs to capital X, where x is equal to say a linear combination of e1, e2, e3, etc. en, say alpha 1, e1 plus alpha 2, e2 plus etc. plus alpha n, en, where this alpha i r scalars belongs to capital R, we define a function fx is equal to alpha 1, gamma 1 plus alpha 2 gamma 2 plus etc plus alpha and gamma n where this gamma 1 gamma 2 etc gamma n are the components of the vector b belongs to r now we can show that f is a linear function clearly f is a functional because alpha 1 is a scalar belongs to capital r gamma 1 is a member of capital r so their product is a member of capital r so their sum is a member of capital r Therefore, f is a function defined from the normed space capital X. Capital X is our Rn. From the normed space Rn to the field capital R. So, it is a functional. Now, to show that it is linear. So, the usual procedure, the conventional procedure to prove the linearity of f is, we take two elements x and y belongs to Rn. So, let x is equal to alpha 1 e1 plus x plus alpha n e n and y is equal to beta 1 e1 plus etc plus beta n e n. So by definition fx is equal to alpha 1 gamma 1 plus etc plus alpha n gamma n. f of y is equal to beta 1 gamma 1 plus etc plus beta n gamma n. So alpha x plus beta y, we multiply x by alpha, y by beta, add them, we add the corresponding terms. So simplifying, we get alpha alpha 1 plus beta beta 1 e1 plus etc plus alpha alpha n plus beta beta n en. We apply f. Therefore, f of alpha x plus beta y is equal to, by definition, f apply go the scalar in the representation of alpha x plus, the first scalar into, first scalar in the representation of alpha x plus beta y into gamma 1. That is the definition of f. 
So this is equal to first scalar in the representation of alpha x plus beta y is alpha alpha 1 plus beta beta 1. So this is alpha alpha 1 plus beta beta 1 gamma 1 plus etc. plus alpha alpha n plus beta beta n gamma n. Simplify. Alpha is taken outside. Simplification. So this is alpha into alpha 1 gamma 1 plus etc. plus alpha n gamma n plus beta into beta 1 gamma 1 plus etc. plus beta n gamma n. And that is alpha fx plus beta fy. So f is linear. So we proved that that is on to and linear. Sorry, it is all, uh, we are going to show that this, this we didn't do yet. Now, F is linear. So with this definition, F E1 is equal to, the definition of F is, F of an element X is, right X as a linear combination of unit with etc. EN, the first scalar into gamma 1. That is the definition of F. So you write E1 as a linear combination of E1, E2, E3, etc. E n. This is the unique way of representing E1 as a linear combination of E1, E2, E3, etc. E n. 1, E1 plus, etc. The all, the all other coefficients are zeros. 1, E1 plus, 0, E2 plus, etc. plus, 0, E n. So that is equal to, by definition, the first scalar into gamma 1. That is 1 into gamma 1. That is equal to gamma 1. So f of E1 equal to gamma 1. And... Consequently, we have f e i is equal to gamma i for each i. So our v is equal to gamma 1, etc., gamma n. And gamma i is equal to f e i. So this is f e 1, f e 2, etc., f e n. And by definition, this vector is t f. So given any v belongs to R n, we proved that there is an f belongs to R n dash such that t f is equal to v. Therefore, T is now it remains to show that T is linear. Now T is a linear operator. So for that we need to show that T of alpha f plus beta g where f and g are two linear functionals. We want to show that T of alpha f plus, alpha f plus beta g is equal to alpha T f plus beta T g. Okay, we apply the definition of T. T of alpha f plus beta g is a vector in Rn whose components are the images of the basis elements under this vector in order. So that is alpha f plus beta g e1, comma alpha f plus beta g e2, etc. alpha f plus beta g en and simplify it alpha into f e1, f e2, etc. f en plus beta g1, g2, etc. g en. That is alpha t f plus beta t g. So this is the def by definition, this is Tf. And the second is Tg. Therefore, alpha Tf plus beta Tg, therefore T is linear. So we proved that T is a non preserving 1 1 1 2 linear operator from R and dash to R. Therefore, T is an isomorphism from the dual space of R and to R and. Therefore, the dual space of Rn is isomorphic to Rn, or in other words, dual space of Rn is equal to Rn. And that completes the proof. Okay, thank you.